ventilation perfusion defects, air coming into the trachea and entering the alveoli. And this right here is just the arterial right here. So the deoxygenated blood is coming from the inferior and the superior vena cava into the right atrium through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle, being pumped out to the pulmonary artery to the lungs, coming in contact with the lungs, this deoxygenated blood giving off CO2, the alveoli, remember we're breathing in that air, it's dumping in that oxygen into the blood to pick it up, then it's coming back into the left atrium through the mitral valve and then to the left ventricle and then being pumped out to the rest of the body uh, in its oxygenated form. So things we're gonna look at here is ventilation and perfusion, and we're gonna be looking at some other things like the partial pressure of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the alveoli and the partial pressures of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the arterioles. This right here, we're talking about the alveoli, the alveoli up here. And the little a's, we're talking about the arterioles. So partial pressures of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the alveoli and partial pressure of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the arterioles as they're going through here, okay? This is VQ, ventilation over perfusion. Now the ventilation perfusion, it's a ratio, okay? It's the ratio of the alveolar ventilation, the air coming in here, to the pulmonary blood flow. Normally, in normal conditions, it's 0.8. This VQ ratio results in an arterial partial pressure of oxygen, that's partial pressure of oxygen, of 100 millimeters mercury, MMHG for millimeters of mercury. The arterial partial pressure of carbon dioxide will be 40. The partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli will be 100 millimeters mercury. And the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the alveoli will be 40. So this is an ideal normal situation. So we're going to be taking a look at some of the abnormal, some of the defects. And the two things we're going to be looking at are airway obstruction, also known as a shunt. And we're also going to be looking at a case of pulmonary embolus where we're going to be seeing dead space. Okay, let's start off with the airway obstruction, the shunt. Now the defect here is that we're having an airway obstruction. Let's say you're at a dinner and this guy across the room is eating a steak or eating something really delicious and it happens to go down the wrong pipe and it goes into his trachea and it actually blocks the trachea. This is just for example, but it's, it's blocking that. And we can't get air down into the alveoli. There's a lack of air coming in here because there's a block. And if this is totally blocked off, we can't get air down here, the VQ is gonna equal zero. And the reason why the VQ is gonna equal zero is because the ventilation is basically disappearing. They're not, you're not getting any air in there, it's going down to zero, and zero divided by anything is gonna be zero. Now, if it's a partial block, and if it's not totally blocked, well, in that case, it will certainly decrease because the ventilation is going down, and that number will definitely be smaller than 0.8. And if it's totally blocked off, it's certainly gonna be zero. Now, it's important to note that there's no gas exchange in the lung that is perfused, there's perfusion happening, but not ventilated. The airway is blocked. We're not getting air down into the alveolus, so we're putting this for the alveolar partial pressures of the oxygen and the carbon dioxide. So the arterial partial pressure of oxygen will be about 40. It's certainly decreasing. This oxygen is not getting in here. It's not being able to go ahead and diffuse across the arterial, and that's the reason why this is going down. And the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is going up to 46 millimeters of mercury. So the composition of systemic arterial blood approaches that of mixed venous blood. This is going up. Okay, so let's take a look at pulmonary embolus. In this case, there's a block right here, essentially blocking the blood. There's an increase in dead space. And why are we saying an increase in dead space? Because we've got air in here, but it's just not crossing the diffusion barrier into the arterial. The blood's not there to pick it up. And we have nothing there for that in the denominator for the perfusion. Anything divided by zero is gonna be infinity. So we're gonna put infinity for the ventilation perfusion. There's no problem with air coming in here. We've got oxygen here, but it's not able to be picked up by the blood. It should make sense that this should be increased. It's 100 millimeters of mercury, it's going up to, to 150 because the blood is simply just not picking it up. Now what about the, the alveolar partial pressure of carbon dioxide? Well, this is gonna be zero. Zero because the blood is not, is not there to dump off carbon dioxide into the uh, alveoli. Because we've got a block here, we're gonna put these values for the arterial oxygen carbon dioxide. There's just no blood there for us to put values for that. So it's an important topic to know for exams. It's, it's an interesting topic, and I hope you found it informative and helpful.